I'm going to talk about parsing and transforming Super Smash Brothers Melee, so let's get into it. Um, if you're unfamiliar, I'll talk a little bit about what Melee is. Melee is a GameCube game from 2001. It's four player, but I think it's usually played with two people. Uh, we have big TVs that we play them on because we like to not have that much input latency. Melee is a fighting game you play with the GameCube controller. You can go back and forth really fast, but it makes it distinctive because of the analog stick. And Melee's an eSport. So this is a tournament I went to in 2018, Fight Pit 8. There were 239 attendees. You don't need to worry about how well I did because I'm a lot better now. Um, but today, I want to talk about how Melee is a file. So that's what we'll be focusing on. This is the start of the Melee file, ssbm.iso. It's 1.4 gigs, and it runs in an emulator called Dolphin. And we do have Netplay. So knowing that Melee is a file and knowing that there's stuff in the game, anything that we see in the game has to be contained within the file. There's not like an asset bank. So we can ask some questions like, where do turnips come from? Um, so just a little bit of introduction to turnips. Peach is the player. I, I like to play Peach. And there's different kinds of turnips. And Peach can just kind of pull them from the ground. But they all use the same 3D model, just different textures. So we have a tool called Dap Texture Wizard that I didn't write that can show you these textures. It's open source, it's written in Python, and it runs great on Linux. And it can kind of uh, open up the ISO and show you the particular assets that are inside. So if you look for the turnip textures, we see that they come from this file called plpe.dat. And we're going to be diving into this a little bit. It's one file, but you can see that it has multiple textures. So I think the interesting thing is if you see a smile on Peach's turnip and you see the smile in here, that's where it comes from. So I think that there's an important question, because I said if Peach's turnip textures are in plpe.dat, then where is that in the big binary file? So I'm going to talk a little bit about the file system table. Um, you don't need to look at all of this, but this is a specification that was reverse engineered of a GameCube disk image. So there's a lot that's in there, um, but the one thing that we'll be looking at is the file system table. So there's an offset, and then we can navigate to it, and we know the size and the length. The entries will basically tell you where files are, what their name is, and how long they are. And all files are contained within. So this is the entry for Peach's turnip file that we looked at earlier. So I have a little graphic here to kind of show you the format. Um, we got some flags saying it's a file. It's got a specific file name for it, um, which is actually an offset into a string table. We have an offset to the actual data, which is you know the binary representation of those art assets. And we have the length stored. So all files are recorded like this. And if you have this, you have all the files. So knowing all this, um, we know how we can look up and find something, but what if we change what was there? So we're going to transform Captain Falcon with Rust. We're going to be using this costume. It's the Animele inspired Potemkin Captain Falcon. Don't worry about it, but the artist is danger. And um, I'm going to go through this fast, but I was thinking initially what the code would look like. So I wanted to have replacements as values that we pass around as a type. I wanted to have an enumeration for each character file, so you can only replace valid characters. I wanted to use a vector of U8s for when we're passing things around. And if we have an ISO and we have some updates, then we definitely should be able to build a new ISO with those replacements in place. So just to talk a little bit about what this looks like, I don't have time to show the implementation, but I have a graphic. On the left is the normal ISO, and on the right is the modified ISO. So this is when we're replacing Captain Falcon's green costume to turn him into Potemkin. So one of the things that we're tracking is in each entry, there's the name, which is fine. There's the length, which could change. And then there's the offset to the data. So in this case, the Captain Falcon file actually is smaller. So the offsets that are past Captain Falcon get pushed forward. So this is uh, what my code tends to do. And um, just to show you what it actually looks like to build the entire ISO, to just take a VEC of U8s and then to just have something that you can load and play, the first thing that we do is we read in the normal ISO. We write the new file system table we generated like before. Um, then we sort the new file system table by offsets because we're going to use a cursor to seek to each piece where we have data that we updated the offsets to, and we're going to write it. And after we add some padding to the game so it boots, we actually can play a new version of Melee where Captain Falcon is entirely different using Rust. So um, just for some next steps, uh, I was thinking about changing the name because it's not very compelling. I wanted to blog about the challenges I went into. Uh, I only support Captain Falcon, so I need to support more characters. I wanted to output runtime traces and graph viz that are similar to the diagrams I showed you here. I need to write example code and docs. I want to publish a crate. And I have a dependency that I want to take out since I learned how things work. And you can check it out on GitHub. 
So yeah, thanks everyone. I got a few acknowledgements. Uh, I just want to shout out the Gailey community. It's an LGBT space where you can play Smash and it's been a huge help for me. And these are some players I think are cool. Uh, so yeah, thanks everyone. That's it for me.